Call the uh, Now you're paid yeah, pretty we'll good. Um, we'll call the regular meeting the August 21, uh, 2013 meeting of the Town Board to order. We uh, typically open our meeting with a public comment period. I ask that uh, if we limit that usually to 15 minutes. I ask that you, if you want to address the board about something, please stand, uh, identify yourself, give us your address for the record, and um, limit your comments to three minutes. And we ask that you comment once in a 15 minute period if at all possible. Um, kind of strict, but not real strict, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, uh, any public comments to start off? There'll be another public comment period at the end of the meeting as well, so. Nothing? Okay. I'll start. Okay. I'll start. Sure. Hi, I'm Debbie Foote. Um, I live at 12 Remington Ave in Norfolk. Um, for the last 30 years, I've lived in Messina. Um, my husband was very ill. He was in the hospital, in and out of this hospital for years and years and years. I cannot believe um, that they are trying to go private. I think Messina has lost enough. They don't need to lose their hospital. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Clyde Leffler. I live at 147 Jefferson Avenue. My comments about your little dig in the paper this morning. Um, what dig is that? Which primarily is directed at Messina Memorial Hospital employees. Okay, I'm not sure you're afraid. We're going ahead. Okay. This was um, where you said, uh, stated that uh, some people feel like they're, um, um, I forgot the exact words. Okay, I know what you're referring to now. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> and is most people at the hospital, hospital thought you were digging it at everybody at that hospital. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. Uh, this hospital saved two lives. He's had kids for three times. Okay. And they saved her, and they saved my wife four times. We've been sick, and I couldn't ask for better treatment in this hospital. These workers, they know my wife almost like brothers and sisters now we're in this hospital. That's why we think it's Stay the way it is. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I'm keeping it to three minutes. Mm -hmm. Gloria Dupree, I live at 20 Haskell Street. I would just like to see you to make some kind of a comment on how much money out of taxpayers' money has gone to support that hospital and when. The only time I'm aware of is a period in the late 1980s when there was a line in our tax bill to pay off a pension debt to New York State. And so you signed a line of credit for them? The town of Messina did, yes. Oh, the but they didn't use they it. They didn't use it, right. Right. So well, there, was a, there was a line in the tax bill. No, no, no. That, the line of credit was different. You yeah, signed the line of credit, but they didn't end up using it. No, I'm saying, no, I'm saying there was a line in our tax no, bill. No, it was an actual. There was right, a, a charge to taxpayers in the late 80s to pay off a pension debt. Right. I think it was $2, $2 million dollars the town borrowed to pay off a pension debt in the late 1980s. Well, I thought it was a line of credit. That was, was, that was, that was about 13 years ago. I think it's two different things. There was a line of credit things. at one point, but the earlier... Jack Saulby was the town supervisor. It was 15 years ago. Workman's Cop. Was it Workman's Cop? Okay, I thought it was pension. The line of credit was about 15 years ago. Okay. But they never used the line of credit. Right. They didn't have to use the line of credit. But since 1989, no tax dollars have gone into that hospital. Not that we're aware of. Okay. I'm Wayne Lincoln. Um, I'll try to keep this short and condense this down. Um, there's been a lot of publicity on the hospital, and most of it's from Mr. Bod screaming gloom, gloom and doom, and we're failing. Uh, there have, I mean, you can go online and find it's a public hospital. We're in better financial shape than any other hospital in the North country at this point. Um, we realize that health care costs, health insurance, and the pension are, are a burden. There's no denying that. And it probably will be a burden for a couple more years. But it is going down. We know the pension costs should be going down. The tiers are dropping off. The tier sixes will be coming over. In four or five years, they're going to be mostly tier six, five and six people, which is going to make a big difference. The health care or the health insurance 
is larger than the pension costs. And we, as employees, have been working for at least four years trying to negotiate lower health care costs, and they have refused to look at anything. In fact, I've got a letter from one of our executives to an insurance broker saying, uh, thanks for your interest. We're very happy with our health care system at this point, our health insurance system. So I don't understand that. We've had um, companies <coughs> wanting to pay $50,000 for certain instruments that the hospital needed. That was refused and told point blank to stay out of their business when they turned around and spent the $50,000. I don't understand that. It's, it's a lot of little things like that that really make quite a difference. Um, the comptroller's office, we've got word from them, and we all know it depends on the stock market, a lot of it. So that's that's a bit of a gamble yet, but there are ways, and I know they know they're in trouble, and they're working on other programs to help alleviate these problems, because we're not the only place that's having these problems, the whole state's having these problems. <coughs> um, one thing I think that really burns a lot of people, like everybody that works there, these hard times that he was supposedly having didn't keep him from taking an extra $50,000 raise. Now that's just really bad management on my, as far as I can see. Um, on top of $245,000 salary mm -hmm. and perks, it's, it makes people have a little bit of a bad taste in their mouth. We've been working very, very hard at the hospital trying to find ways to cut and find ways to make more money. A couple of extra doctors in key places, which they're working on, <coughs> it's been quite a while they've been working on it, would make a huge difference in the income. We are shipping people to Potsdam all the time, <coughs> and that costs us money. There's several million dollars a year that could be gained right there, and that doesn't include all the after physical therapy follow-ups and the fact that those people going to Potsdam may not ever come back here. They'll go to Potsdam. I was in retail for years, and you just don't let somebody go to another store if you can help it. You pay to keep going there. Um, like Gloria said, this, this place has never been a burden on the town. In fact, it's been quite an asset. It's good. It's it's a good pension. It's a town pension, a county pension, a state pension. Everybody knows that. The health insurance is, is great that we've got now. We're willing to sacrifice that. The pays are reasonable. There, nobody's getting rich there, except for Mr. Bond. As I said, nobody's getting rich there. But um, it is a good income for the town. I mean, these people are living here. They're spending money here. They're buying cars here. If this goes private the way they want it to, I know I can guarantee 20% minimum of the people that are working there now will be gone. They're staying here only for that pension because they've got other interests elsewhere. I know of a dozen personally, and that's just the ones that I'm aware of. The money's spent living here because they feel secure is incredible. If their financial security is in jeopardy, they're going to think twice about buying anything. And when these people are moving out of town, the housing market's going to go to worse than it is. Bad news. It's worth a little bit of struggle and a little bit of fight to try to keep this thing running. In five or six years, I don't think we'll have these problems. There's a lot of Obamacare, there's a lot of reimbursement things going on, but everybody's facing that. Private or public, it will still be facing that. That really has no effect on it. The big thing now is the pension. They want to go this way for the pension. It's worth fighting for. Get through this hump. Dare I say, even if the taxpayers had to pay something for a year or two to keep this hospital here, the third largest employer in town, it's going to make a big dent in the town if it goes private. A big dent. We had a labor management meeting today, and no one could guarantee anything. Health insurance costs could be unaffordable for the employees, as it is in Potsdam. There's maybe four or five people at Potsdam that have health insurance because <coughs> they're terminal critical. The 
rest of them. Oh, the whole staff? It. The whole staff at Canyon Cross, the whole staff. people have insurance? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. And it's, they're paying twelve to $1,500 a month for a family for this health insurance. Who, so they have insurance? They oh, it's offered. It. Sure. If they can afford it. They it, can't afford it. It's, it's already four people. Okay. $700 a month for, for a single. And that's, that's the same way in a lot of the hospitals. I know Malone, <coughs> they didn't even accept the insurance they were offering their, their employees. So nobody's, no, nobody knows where that's going to go. I'm just saying it's, it's worth fighting for. It's worth the town, if the town had to sacrifice a couple of years for it, it's worth keeping that industry, if you would, in town. And building it up and getting it going again, I would say new management wouldn't hurt. Somebody with a real business sense. Why, why, why do you think the hospital is going to go away? If you press it's not. It's it's not. not. But, but Canton Potsdam hasn't gone away. No. Augensburg hasn't gone away. Plattsburgh hasn't gone away. They're all private not for profit. Right. The employees can the afford the insurance. But, no, but, but they the all the work there. The hospital hasn't gone away. The no, jobs are still there. Are not okay. the same it's jobs. a college town. Most of the people, a lot of the people that work at Canton Potsdam have spouses that work elsewhere. But they're making less than you guys are? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. they do. They are, without yep. the pension. Yep. They're making yep. less. So when X ray tech at Canton Potsdam makes less than X ray tech at Museum of the No. They make well, wait, some say yes, some say no. Which they, make, they make more Licensed hours. people make probably 5% more. Non-licensed people make considerably less. Does and Canton, their job Does Canton Potsdam have problem, difficulties filling positions? It's a constant turnaround. No, but do no. they have a problem filling no. positions? No. 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 They're, they're contracting their um, maintenance janitorial staff is contracted out. Oh. To an agency. No, well, yeah, a lot of people do that, but right. it's, I assume it's still a good job. Well, it's a good hospital. People need to work. Malone, Dallas Hyde, every other hospital in New York State. Mm -hmm. and, and I've been surprised to hear CSA officials from Albany say that somehow the CSA members at Canton Boston aren't performing as well as the CSA members at Canton Boston. Well, they're, 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 they're union. They're union. They're union. And I'm just shocked that, 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 that one. You can even say about another, but yeah. I don't, there's the CSA in Augensburg. No, they're not. They're not public, so they're, they're okay. So they're, where they? Uh, yeah, I believe they're all unionized. They're all sure they're all unionized. They also yeah. don't have civil service tests in order to rate the yeah. ability of the people that they're hiring. Yeah, because they're not civil service jobs. Yeah. Okay. That's not. But that you know, in my opinion, that's not all a negative because you know you could you don't necessarily get always get the best employees by just because you passed the test, in my, my experience. And that always, that's the separate thing. But there's all all different kinds of <coughs> opinions about that. There are very <coughs> few full-time, I know at least nursing staff at Boston Hospitals, they're hired 40% or 60%, just like Walmart does. So they have to pay less benefits. Very few. How do they compete for nurses when they can't hire enough nurses? They have nurses with husbands, spouses that have other jobs, or the nurses work two jobs. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say a similar thing to what Joe was saying. I, I, I'm not sure if that there's evidence at all that the hospital would go away if it became private. No, I think you are. You're saying, you're saying that all these jobs are going to be lost. And, and, people are going to leave. There's going to be a mass you know, exodus. This man over here said that, it, that his wife was this one of the time, time folks. One of the time. Place where they're not getting any retirement. They're not getting any insurance. Well, what is the purpose that's of why I just a place asked, That's why I just asked. Is can't Potsdam had difficulty filling their job openings? Yeah. Well, even if they do. You just said that they don't. people don't want to work there. And people do want to work I'm talking about Messina. Oh, why? Okay. But if they have go having turnover, insurance and then not having they insurance. jobs and they have a constant turnover, how do you keep on top of the care that, you give but and that's, what you that do business-wise? That would, because it's constant. That would suppose that people that go to Canton Potsdam Hospital don't get as good a care than the casino. Well, and I don't that think that that's, that's that you turnover, can't, it's hard to stay on top of that's a theory. But the evidence is that they get just as good a service in Canton Potsdam Hospital as they do in Messina. They get just as good a service in Dallas Hyde and, and uh, Hepburn Hospital, Good Samaritan Hospital, all the Syracuse hospitals, every other hospital in New York State. 
People from Messina go all over the place. Burlington Hospital is a private, not-for-profit hospital. Plattsburgh Hospital is a private, not-for-profit hospital. Saranac Lake is a private, not-for-profit hospital. So there is no evidence that if we become private, that patient care will be sacrificed. It's an opinion, but that if, if that's true, then every, everywhere else that you go, you shouldn't be going. We should, we should tell the people in Messina that if you need cancer treatment at Hepburn Hospital, you shouldn't be going there. <clears throat> Yeah, but the doctors because it's a private hospital. But that's what we're saying. Can I make a comment? Well, yeah, we, we, this lady, I want everybody to comment. But we do it one at a time. You're going to identify yourself with us really, please. You're up first. Go ahead. Shayla Frederick, 37 Park Ave. I just want to extend here as to what Wayne said. Um, my husband is disabled, um, so my income is the only income that comes in. What little bit of Social Security that he gets for disability, um, I have my insurance. If it comes to the point, I mean, and we live paycheck to paycheck now. I put a, a kid through college. He has now graduated. But if I, the only thing that's keeping me here is my retirement. If I lose that retirement, I know it's going to be there, and I'm going to have to pay into a 401k or whatever. I can do that anywhere. And I preferably myself, and I have told a lot of my employees, if that happens, I will not hesitate. I've lived in this village all my life. I have graduated from here. I love this town and this village, but I won't hesitate to move where my son moved, which is in Colorado. I don't have a problem doing that to be closer to him and his future family. What's keeping me here is my job, and I do love my job, and I love the fact that I have 27 years at this facility and was hoping that I would be able to retire from this facility without having to go through any of this. I have done, I've worked in several departments in that hospital, and I've worked with a lot of these employees the whole 20 some years, or 15 years, or whatever. And I just can't fathom us that have worked there so long having this happen to us, and this is the reason why we went there to begin with. It's not like I haven't been able to go to another job, but I won't do that because I love this facility and I love this place. But like I said, I won't hesitate to move put my home on for sale and go where my family is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you your head up next. Go ahead. Yeah, really? yeah my name is Charlie Rome. I live okay. on the Grove Parkway. That's <laughs> right. Um, one of the things that I can understand bouncing off the jobs part or something like this, but what this gentleman said, I've sat in the pot stand hospital for 30 minutes and seen seven people from the Messina going in to use their services. This is what's going to hurt your hospital. Okay? The hospital did a big, big cost-saving thing several years ago. They got rid of their cytotechnologist. It was a $15,000 a year saving. So then when I see that the CEO of the board gets a raise of, what, 45000 I think, well, that kind of washed that right out of the way. Plus, I was always curious. Um, it seems more and more, if they want to use the services here, keep the services here. They, they use LabCorp to do their cytology. I think personally that most women, if you had a pap smear done, you'd be a little bit more concerned about having somebody local that might know your name and be really concerned about making sure that they checked it for cancer instead of somebody down in Albany that all you are is a damn number. You know, The big thing that you gentlemen have to worry about though is that jobs that are lost, houses are going to be lost. Exactly. You're going to lose tax dollars. That's where it's going to really hit you. Plus, where does a hospital rationalize that they've got to cut back on employees or cut back on salaries, but then they build a little mini Taj Mahal across from the hospital? For what? For 50 or 60 years that hospital was fine? For the large number of doctors that we had in that community? You know, I can understand everything's for progress, but how many tax dollars has this community lost because all of a sudden the hospital says, oh, we're going to ring in all the doctors. We're going to give you a, a little building that you can practice in. That's tax dollars taken off the tax rolls of Messina. And it's not right. It's sometimes you people, you know, you gentlemen assign the people to sit on the hospital board. 
But why is it every no, time I've Charlie, seen Charlie, 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 I can't stop you there. Supervisors. The supervisors well, have done that. The well, town councilmen have had no control on that. Okay, whatsoever. the supervisor puts them on the town on, on the town uh, hospital board. But why is it nobody seems to ever be able to rein those people in? It seems that every time the CEO or the hospital says we want to do something, it's like a bunch of bobbing puppets. They just sit there and shake their head. Amen. I know I had an issue one time. I called two different people on that board. One of them came over and blew me off, and the other never bothered to answer me. He didn't even bother because I knew I left a message on his answer phone, and he never bothered to call. You know, what are these people there for? I, I just, just one of the. And I don't know how the, you are all going to react to this. That building up there. Two years ago, and I said this the last time, I think you were here, the last last time. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, the doctors in this country do not want to set up a practice anymore. And across the United States of America, the, hosp the hospital built that office building with their funds, which, you know, now we're in financial problems, so everybody's pointing at it. But the problem is the doctors do not, and this was from NPR radio, I was listening well, I was working with them. This is what <coughs> national people told us. The national trend is doctors don't want to set up a practice like the old time doctors. You know, if I was a doctor, I'd come in town, I'd get an office, have, I'd hire my people, do all that. They don't want that anymore. They want to work for the hospital and let the hospitals across this country take on those responsibilities. That is the climate. I'm just, Charlie, it's just for information, okay? That's the climate, part of the climate that, that we're dealing with. In, in that. And it's not all of it, but it's part of it. Okay, so that's why they made that decision to put that office building in. And we can debate that thing and, all night long, but and, I just can tell you that's what the national trend is. Along with what this man said over here, we're, we're short of doctors in certain areas, because so we lose business, right? They, they are constantly recruiting doctors. You have to know that, okay? They are trying the best they can. They're not successful. For a lot of reasons, a lot of people don't want to live in the scene in New York. That's right. <laughs> okay? So they have had to build this office building as a way of recruiting doctors. And you can shake your head no, but it's the truth. Well, first off, people I didn't don't shake like my head carrying no. it. Okay. It's the truth. Now, if you're referring to me, John, I didn't shake my head no. No, no, no. The guy behind okay. you is shaking now, his head no. But in retrospect, gentlemen. And, and we're we're getting down specific, so I guess maybe we ought to probably move away from the, the goal, everybody's goal, we can probably <clears throat> talk all night long, is to keep the place open. Yep. Okay. It's your goal, it's our goal. It's the hospital board's goal. The hospital board, you'll get no support from me if you start putting down the hospital board. You, I am going to turn off. You can, you can like that or not like that. If you're going to put, put down the hospital board, you can put down the administration. They're big boys. They get paid. The hospital board is still, has done the best they can for a very long time. So if, if you want my support, I don't want to hear anything bad about the hospital board. We have some very, <laughs> very good community members that have been, like our supervisors have appointed, and they've done a good job appointing them. Excellent people trying to do the best they can. And that's all I can say about that. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mary Hedeka, the 23 Nightingale. I've worked at the hospital 28 years. I'd like to ask if any of you sitting up there would like to be experiencing a transport to 25 or 30 miles away when you're experiencing chest pain in an MI. Does that hit home to anyone? or have a loved one that has to be transported on a gurney with a four inch thick hospital pad 28 miles down the road because we don't have services here. What no one is looking at or commented on, and I don't know if anyone has the answer, is what guarantee do any of us have that Department of Health is going to Stamp that once this hospital status changes, that it will stay a hospital. None. I've worked in healthcare for 28 years, and I've heard time and time again that the people in Albany and Syracuse, who tried to shut us down, by the way, in 1985 when I was working there, their edict is to consolidate and 
reduce services. So you better think about that. That is what is very scary. That, and that's, and that's what the hospital board is looking at. And that's what something that Charlie Fowler was talking about. That, that, yeah. that, that the health commissioner has said, we don't know that you need four hospitals that's in right. St. Lawrence County. That's right. Um, so uh, that's why we can do what we can to keep the hospital here. Uh, unfortunately, people in Albany don't realize our, our topography right. up here. But, but we've been, think... Hang on, Marie. We've been in that fight already. Uh, and fortunately, we had a lot of moxie with our industrial plants in town that had some juice. And when that fight was going on, they say uh, the juice of that, well, that, that juice is gone. Barry, that juice is saying, not around anymore. What you're saying is absolutely true, and I agree with you. But it would appear, it would appear, that at the highest level of state government, consolidation is the buzzword. You're seeing this with schools. You're seeing this with hospitals. You're seeing it with. You will see it eventually in the courts. Okay, this, this governor is determined, and, and as I said, I'm agreeing with you, this governor seems to be determined to consolidate. And they're really, that's way above our pay grade. We'll have nothing to say over that. But I do agree with you. They, they have that power right now. Whether we're private or, or public, they can, right. they exactly. can shut us down Exactly, tomorrow. but I guess my comment then is, are you not just giving them fodder to make that happen quicker by well, saying it's time to change status. You know, you know what I think we'll give them fodder? The hospital running in the red. Right, a balance sheet, a negative balance sheet will be the, the, the biggest fodder. And it has a negative cash flow right now. But as somebody said, uh, they have a good balance. They had a much bigger balance a couple years ago because they've lost money now for about two and a half years. You know, we had about $20 million at one time. but. You know, like the last thing I saw, we're losing at about a four million dollar rate right now. So, so, and I don't know what we lost last year. It might have been about the same thing. So that twenty million dollars, being think of think of your checkbook at home at this rate. And that's what they're saying. That's what Charlie's been saying. And he's people don't like to hear it, but they're but they're going to look at based on current projections. They're going to continue to lose money. And the minute that we go negative balance, the only option then is that either the town taxpayers take over or we have to close it. Or, or New York it. State closes it. So our goal, the hospital's goal, the employee's goal, should be we need to do whatever it takes to keep it from going to a negative balance. Because like I said at the last meeting, I worked with General Motors, and we all know what happened when General Motors couldn't pay its bills any longer. What used to be the largest co company in the history of the world went bankrupt. People said it couldn't happen. That will never happen. It did. And a lot of people in this town had to go through what you guys are worried about, losing pensions, losing health care, losing all that stuff. So everybody's goal should be, right now, whatever it takes to keep it open. It's going to take sacrifices from everybody. Except Mr. Five. Well, maybe except Mr. Five. I don't know. Just to clarify one more thing. The $20 million was, most of it was $15 million spent on buildings. I mean, additions. And no, no, remodel. that's not true. It is. No. So we spent ten million on one one wing. We spent three and a half million. We, we did that. Year. We did that. Before. We did the the wing, and we still had over twenty million. Right, there was thirty million at the time, and or twenty eight million, something like that. And so some of that twenty million dollars. Okay, we can look at the balance sheet. We can go over that over and over and over. Part of the balance sheet included the loans that they that they took out as cash on hand. So you've got. A nine million dollar loan with a nine million dollar expense. The twenty, the twenty some million dollars may look like it's available cash, but you've got, you had uh, accruances against that money. You know, so it all depends on when you look at that number. When the addition, where which they did a great job, you know, the the intensive care unit. You know, a lot of these big improvements that that hospital have occurred under this management and this board. You know, we have a world-class intensive care unit that you guys work in, 
and it was done under this management and a lot of this board, hospital board. Okay, so that's why I want to. I'm going to click click off if I hear a lot of negativity about the board. They they tried to do, and they've done a lot of good things, and they're trying to do the best they can. But the twenty million dollars was after that that uh, intensive care unit wing was built, and where they expanded the radiology and all that stuff. And since that time, we've other. The office building was built that took cash away, and operations, losses in operations have taken cash away from that. I don't know exactly what their balance is now. I think it's around $13 million, somewhere around that. I don't want to cut off all the comments, but there's a couple questions I want to ask. Wayne, are, you're, you're the union president for one? Vice president. Vice president. And Clyde, are you another union well, anyways, I'm going to ask the union members. Okay, I'm going to ask you this question. This man here lived it, went through it. My father-in-law lived it and went through it with GM. And when they were ready to close up back in the, the first time, it was 1887. I moved to Indiana. Those guys and gals got together with the management. And they, quite frankly, they saved the plan for, what, another 20 years, maybe? 15 years? 21 years. 21 years. 21 years. Because they put together a team, this is a concept that's already happened, and I'm going to make sure that the president of the board hears this from me. They put, a, put together a team concept to try to save GM, and they did it for 21 years. And, and, and what I hear going on right now, from what I'm picking up, there's a lot of infighting, for a simpler term, because I'm not an English major or that, going on back and forth. If we want to save that hospital, our unions and our management at that hospital has got to do what those guys at GM did. And I would suggest that you get a hold of those union members and the management members. They're all probably retired or whatever. And talk to them and say, how did you do it? Because if it hadn't been for that, that plant would have been gone 21 years earlier than what it went. And that's the kind of thing it's going to take to help this. Now, on another note. Every time I go to the meeting, this is 18 months ago, we were all, I think John, you and I are both late at this time. We were hearing, you got to consolidate, you got to consolidate. And we know, as board members, the municipal law restricts us. If John's an insurance company and Joe's an insurance company and, and the three of us are all companies, we can go in and deal with these guys to get better rates. They're pro Frank's got a company, he's private. Albert's, he's, he's private, I'm private. Along comes the public hospital. Because of law, they can't get into negotiations because we're, we're dealing with, with uh, putting public money at, at, at risk. Your union down in Albany needs to talk to people in that health department and find out two things. Can we get help with that? And secondly, is it true that you want us to consider that? I, this is the Italian. That's why I talk so loud. This is so Slow down, Charlie. This is the added. You need to talk, and I said this the first time Joe and I met with the union guys in the room across the hall. You need to get to Albany and you need to talk to those people. You've got more moxie than we got. We're just town board members. And, and, and our weight, other than our local community, doesn't weigh a whole lot. You need to get to them and you need to talk to them. And you need to say, is this really what's coming down the pike? And we, we're restricted because we're a public hospital because we can't enter into negotiations. I look at the balance sheets and I see the loss of revenue. I keep looking at that all the time. It's continually getting worse and worse and worse. My wife works in the health care. She came home the other night and says, Medicare is going to hit us again. And that's going to hurt us because we're, what, I think, around 60%. Medicare, Medicare and Medicaid. And Medicaid. Uh, did I say Medicare? It's oh, Medicaid, oh. Medicaid. Medicaid. She says they're going to hit us again. Because she works in the healthcare field. What's that going to do to Messina Memorial? It's going to kill our revenue site. Again, I implore you two things. You need to try to come up with a model like we did with GM and save that baby up there. It's a beautiful baby. And you guys need to talk to those people in Albany, your, boss, your, your union leaders, and they need to get down there, and they don't need to blow us off like they did when we went down there before. You know, they blew us off before. Not you guys. No. Not the CSEA. Those guys in Albany did. 
And you need to be as vocal as hell about it. Because to be honest with you, my opinion, there's two public hospitals. And those guys down there, they don't give a rat's knee out about it. Well, even as a, I as just have... With insurance and stuff, we're trying to get them to change, get them <clears> to <throat> save money. Uh, 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 Ma'am, I'm going to talk to the board president, and I'm going to suggest to him that they need to do this. They need to sit down with the unions and talk. You maybe said you, you had a labor like, management meeting. I don't know sure if that's done. what you do in those meetings or not. But if we don't do that, we're going to sit here and fight, and the next thing you know, we're all going to be Sir, part, just upset. I, and I'll shut up. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do as a town board member, which is listen. And I think this session and sessions like these are very valuable for us. Okay, it's a learning experience for us, but I just have one question for you. Each of you who have spoken have brought up valid points, and they're points that have to be considered in the grand scheme of things. But have you shared these, have you shared these with the hospital board at a board meeting and with the administration of the hospital? In other words, are they hearing, are they hearing what we're hearing right now? <coughs> Sir, would, could you answer that for me? We are trying. Uh, quite frankly, we had a meeting this afternoon, labor management meeting that went well into overtime, and we got a lot accomplished. And Mr. Bob wasn't there. Well, I think what Chuck is trying to say. But, no, we are <coughs> definitely we're trying to work with the administration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. every yeah. time yeah. First time yeah. this this is yeah. this directly affects you. Absolutely. Okay, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so therefore. Therefore, every, as, as this proceeds through the process that it has to fall, okay, you people should be involved. I mean, not all of you, and you don't want everybody there. You want a representative group. Sheila, I'm sorry, I didn't. We've been told we can't discuss, we're not supposed to talk about any of this while we're working. With well, well you don't have to. But you're not working now and you're talking about it with us. Right. Right. So. Well, she's saying we have patients that ask us our opinion on it, and I'm we aren't allowed, allowed to say a word. We're not allowed to say anything to them. Yeah, but my my point is not. My point is, you should you should be involved. You know, your reps. Okay, should be involved in this process as it as it takes its course. That's all I'm saying to you. But I, I didn't know, and I didn't know that, you know, were you given the opportunity to share your concerns with them as you're sharing them with us? And you should share them with us. I, I asked that question at the hospital board meeting Monday night, and the, the initial thought was that they're not, but then there are meetings between CSCA and, and Navy, uh, Navy, yeah, Navy's reps, and it's a matter of are those channels being utilized to discuss some of this stuff, but yeah, it's a great idea. These, these meetings these meetings should not be confrontational. They're very, very emotional, sure. and we can understand that. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, you're talking with us, and we're talking with you, and that's the way it should be. We're is getting your opinion. Is there a chance, though, that one of you would go to make sure that there's not confrontation? Well, that's, that's, I agree with you, but we have two liaisons to that board. Yeah, I'm not opposed to the one who would be. That, but, you know, I, I there are that. town board liaisons. To so the, if they were to the set up a meeting with administration and you would go to sit there to make sure that there was some kind of If I have a role to play, sure, I have no problem doing that. I do a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. has, there been yes, an, has, has there been an offer or any offers from either to put, reopen uh, negotiations, reopen the contract? Yeah, I, I'm not a member of the system here, but uh, I do work for CSCA and I do come from London. So there's a couple of things that we should really talk about. One, you're right, keeping the hospital is probably a priority. Can you just tell us your name, sir, for the record? Sean Egan. Okay. Second priority should be keeping good jobs, good wages, good benefits, because that's a real benefit for the community. Chuck, he's mm -hmm. mentioned that you know we should do a few things. We have, over the last couple of years, offered to save hundreds of thousands of dollars, and Mr. Fada has refused to entertain those ideas. Wayne talked about the health insurance. Sure. Yes. That, was that offer made during negotiations? We're in negotiations right now. Matter of fact, last negotiations, we went two years, almost two years through arbitration, 
because the hospital wanted give backs on health care. And we fought it because that's generally, you know, we have a right to try to advocate for our membership. We finally said, okay, we're going to you know, give in to your demands. We're going to pay more. We're gonna, our employees going to pay more. And he said, ah, don't bother. The, 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 the actually arbitrator that came down from Albany was flabbergasted. After going through arbitration, mediation, the whole fact-finding process for five to walk away, I'm personally convinced that he's, he's, had, he's had this privatization thing on his agenda for a long time. You say you know nothing about it. The last board meeting said it's not nothing those decisions been made. But he goes out and spends $100,000 for a company for the pure purpose of going to see how we can privatize. We knew that. Absolutely. Okay. When they're in the red. Okay. Right. So privatization clearly. Wait a minute. How are they going to find out otherwise? They have to Well, no, no. The main purpose of him is to privatize. No, but answer my question. He hasn't sat down with us. answer my question. How will they get the facts and figures if they don't hire somebody to do the research? Or do somebody do the research? Well, there's, there's two options here. You can either privatize, like you said, or you can try to find ways to keep it public. What's not happening is, and I would argue, and on behalf of these people here, that keeping it public is not only good for the hospital and good for these, for these uh, uh, employees here, but good for the community. As we've cited out, health insurance is more expensive than our pension plan right now. We've come up with ways to save lots of money in terms of uh, 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 health insurance. The pension plan has pointed out, right, it's gone from a small amount of money to four, almost $4 million a year. Okay, that's a lot of money. But we could save money in a variety of ways for the hospital. In the next couple of years, we're going to see it go down for a whole host of reasons. One is obviously the money, the, 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 the pension plan is now much more uh, doing better in the system market. For now. Two, tier six. But tier six, right now, about 20%. You actually have a very high number of people right now in the tier six system, okay, which is a very affordable plan in terms of uh, the pension plan. It's not free. Some employees will pay up to his 9% toward, toward the plan, right, right now people are paying nothing. Okay. So the cost is going to go down. So you have to make a decision as this board, do you want the third largest employer to have people that don't have a good pension? And by the way, Fox will walk away with a six-figure pension. That's okay with him. It always seems that the rich seem to keep going, you know, getting the deals, and these poor people down here don't walk away with nothing. <coughs> But so let him, I'm not saying he to begrudge him his six uh, digit, you know, six uh, uh, pension. It's not, you know, it's 100,000, whatever it may be, okay? But he's going to also then probably, what's going to happen, and who's going to take over this new private hospital? He is. He is. He is. Yeah, there'll be a yeah board, and it's probably no board, then, probably. What? There'll probably be a board, like there is a yeah, possibility. There'll probably be a board, but I suspect that he'll be all right. So all we're saying to you, look, we're willing, in terms of legislation, we're more than willing. I've sat down with the director of the Political Action Department. She was more than willing to go to the legislature. You're absolutely right. We have a lot of influence in the legislature. We'll go to the, we'll go to the legislature and try to find any way to make this hospital more, more practical, more, more collaborative with other hospitals. We can do that. You killed it. But you already right. killed it 15 years ago. You killed the flexibility bill. CSA Albany, you want to talk about what the hospital has done? Wait, no, wait, 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 let me finish. 15 years ago, there was a flexibility bill introduced twice, passed in the Senate twice. I worked for the Senate at the time. It would have allowed the Hospital to enter these partnerships. The local CSEA supported it. You guys in Albany killed it. Killed it for no reason that I could hear at the I was time. There 15 years well, ago. somebody was, is my point. So well, let's tell the whole story if we're going to tell the story. Let's tell the whole story. story. But right now, okay. for whatever reason, you know, this is what we're talking about right now. We're not talking 15 years ago. Okay, but we're not talking insurance three years ago. They need with five. Well, I so. think that because three years ago we could have saved $800,000. Yeah, okay. Three times 800000 is $2.4 million. I'm just saying be truthful before I am being tell truthful. the whole story. I am being truthful. Okay. What I'm saying to you now, though, that we are more than willing to go with you, to go with the, with, the, with the you, with the FOD, anybody on, in name, in sight, what types of legislation he needs to make it more flexible. All I'm saying is you have to make a decision at the board. Mm -hmm. What kind of hospital do you want? Well, you want a, a, a smaller hospital? You want a private hospital? You want people to have getting paid less possible? Excuse me, that's not the decision that we're going to make. We want a viable hospital. Well, that is not the decision that lead, we're going to make. Your decision the decisions to that, we though. make down the road will, will be, like I said earlier, is what do we have to do to keep the place open? Whether it's public, private, whatever. The patients that go into that place every day, I think it never occurs to them when they sign in whether this is a public or private hospital. They just need care. So we, as a board, 
and the citizens, of, most of the citizens of Messina, I'm sure, their goal is to keep the place open. Also to keep the place open without putting the bill on the taxpayers. Because we've never had to do that. So that's the goal. That should be everybody's goal. And it isn't right now. Well, it isn't right now because all the talk and negativity has totally been on around the pensions and stuff like that. And the cost side of this is where all the talk has been. When you read these articles, instead of looking at them totally negative, you have to look at the revenue side of, of the equation. The revenue side of the equation, as Charlie, and whether you like him or not, he's been pretty good financially in the last 20-some years. That's how we got $20 million, even though we paid in $20 million into the pension plan in the last 12 years. <clears throat> the revenue side's going down. There are going to be cuts in Medicare. There are going to be cuts in Medicaid. We have to take trillions of dollars out of the medical system in the United States right now. Every state, every, the whole United States and every state is faced with taking trillions of dollars out of the medical. That's only going to happen one way when, it, when so much of it is Medicare and Medicaid government funded medical medical care. They are going to cut the revenue side of the hospital. That's what they were trying to tell you in all of these articles that everybody doesn't want to believe. Everybody wants to believe that the pension plan's contribution is going down. That's the forecast. Everybody wants to believe that side of it. But nobody wants to believe that the revenue side is going down. That's not going to happen. But the pension plan is going to no, get better. I don't think anyone's disagreeing with that. Right. So, so, so my point is, is no. don't say that we're going to make a decision on whether we want to make the hospital private or public or whatever. That is not our goal. Our decisions will be, speaking for myself, and I think I'm speaking for everybody else, what do we got to do to keep it open? And my question would be, Rephrase that question to you. Why do we keep it open and keep it public? Because these people deserve a good. If pension. that, if that, that's if you if you're going to tell me that's your question, then we support you wholeheartedly. If your question is how do we try to find a way, if you, maybe you're not successful, but how do you find a way to keep that hospital public and owned by the town if we can do that financially? We'll do that. We'll come to the table. We will find ways to save that money. Be a, and as far I, as the I ACA, don't have any issue with it, what you just said. And if that's your, if that's that's how you're going to phrase it, then we'll support you. But if it's just a matter of keeping the hospital open, that's a problem in itself, and I think it's a problem for the community too. But as as Fod said, he's going to, he may lose ten million dollars over the next two, 10 years. He's going to probably lose that ten million dollars whether it's private or public. Right. And, and first he will. of all, he, he may lose that. But the other side of that, we had analysis because we don't know what the ACA is going to actually do. If the ACA works the way they say it's going to work, and I recognize that's that's you know the federal government, state government, local government, you know how much faith you have in any, any, any of those, but there may be more money in some levels because now you have more people insured that were never insured before. But no, but the fact is, when that bill was signed, the Congressional Budget Office said that the deficit would go down by two trillion dollars over the next fifteen years. For that to happen. There has to be less money coming out of the government because they're not increasing the taxes. They are cre increasing some taxes for that Accountable Care Act. But the vast majority of it is coming from cuts in Medicare and Medicaid. I don't disagree with that. Well, I know you don't. Know. That's the way it is. What we're asking you to do, though, in all earnest, for all these people that work at the hospital, have that question reframed. That you should be to go to that code of five and say, before you look at privatization, what possibly, what can you do? What, 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 what things can you cut? What can you save? What can you do to keep that hospital public? And all of if that. that question's asked. And going back to what Chuck said, and that's why I asked the question, have there been overtures to open the contract? All of that is going to have to be done through collective bargaining. You will not settle for anything that is imposed on you. 
I know how this stuff works. They have no right to impose changes on you without your representation. They cannot just tomorrow say, we're changing your health care plan because you've got a bargained health care plan. And you can't say it. Okay, so all of these changes on the cost side have to be collectively bargained. And that's why there, ha there should be a big push right now somehow to open negotiations. And all, I don't know when your contract comes up. Right now. We're in negotiations right now. And he's put 